Hey, hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to Chronicles of a Crafter. So today we're working on our weekly tag challenge and I'm doing the, uh, this will be the swing tag with the hidden pocket, I believe. Let's just check our, let's check what our, um, t uh, prompts are. So these are for, this is our weekly tag challenge on um, week five, I believe we're up to already. Week five, and I'm doing the, oh, this one, hidden pocket, the swing tag with the hidden pocket. And I've already, like, pre-done some of these because I realize how long this these videos are when I'm doing them from scratch. So I have these here. These are my three tags that I'm going to be inserting into our tag journal. And I have them here in various phases of the project so I can show you guys how they all come about, how they all come together. So this week I'm using receipts and journal paper or ledger paper. So I'll check that off. And then again, we'll figure out our toppers at the end. Maybe we'll put toppers, maybe we don't need toppers. We can do something as simple as, you know, bull nose clips and uh, clothes pins, things like that to use as toppers. If we don't really need them, then we won't use them, okay? Um, just using some journal paper that I created. I did a master board um, and I've done some, uh, this is the, here we go. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is the infamous ledger paper that Pam at the Paper Outpost saw me make and was fascinated and thought that, you know, it was an inspiring moment for her and she also decided to create some of her own ledger paper that's one of them here's another these are my originals so I just copy these on my on my copier to um, to use in my projects uh, as you can see like this is a copy okay it's all flat there's no raised edges as opposed to this one um, let's see what else I have in here I think I also have like the mercantile <laughs> The uh, Magnolia Mercantile one, that one was another one that uh, that Pam mentioned in her video. But I'm just going to use some of what I already have here on hand. These are just copies of vintage actual uh, ledgers. Okay, so yeah, what I do is I take those and I stamp all over them or I do like a little collage on them and leaving some areas legible but yeah I just kind of do a little mixed media on it in order to create something like this or something like this or something like that so I'm just going to show you guys really quickly like how I come about the ideas for um, doing ledger paper or journal paper um, you know to make a project here's just some paper from a master board that I uh, created and cut out again if I remember and I usually do I'll put the links up here for you guys uh, just so you can see like how these all these pages come together to to make various projects that we use here in the craft room so that said here's a nice ledger page that I can use this ran through my copier it has some um, you know looks like watermarks and died and you know it's very old but it's not it's just it's just a copy of a page so we'll use that and I'll show you the one of the finished products of this the week's tag um, tag project this is what I mean by a swing tag with a hidden pocket okay so this one has a pocket down here at the bottom and it has a pocket up here at the top okay so yeah I just put a little bit of um, decor on the fronts of the pockets I mean of the tags and then tuck them down into this pocket right here and this is a double pocket this one is not one that we're going to be doing this week but you can because it's so simple to do I'm just showing you guys one of the finished products of the tag a week project so I'll set this one in the box because that one's complete. This one is partially complete. I just have to glue down the pocket, 
add the brad at the top for the swinging part and this one's complete so this is just how I used it it's the journal paper on the front and then some more of my um, masterboard paper here and I just tore up some masterboard paper and um, um, made this pocket with it so there's that we'll work on that one and here's one that's not as far along as the others they're all the same size five by seven of course here's another pocket that I just you know stamped all over some journal paper back there and or ledger paper <laughs> I gotta stop calling it journal paper because sometimes you guys don't know what I'm talking about but um, yeah this is just some, some more ledger paper that I collaged on top of and made my own I rounded the corners of the swing just to get rid of that obtrusive uh, pointy edge right there so I rounded the corners on the swing and we'll just pop a little brad in decorate this back part of the tag glue down our pocket and I can give you the measurements of all of this stuff and then we'll collage back here on this one okay so our swing well we know our pocket I'm um, sorry we know our tags are five by seven right so here we go this one measures five across by seven tall okay so that's the measurements of our tag our swings measure this one measures four inches by probably seven tall or just under seven nope it's seven tall okay so it's four by seven for the swing the front section that's going to swing forward and then our pockets measure also this one measures three and seven eighths by uh, three and a half okay and I did a little scalloped edge uh, thumb notch looks like looks like cookie monster took a bite out of that <laughs> That's what the little uh, scallop edge remind me of. But anyway, yeah, I, I punched a little thumb notch in there. You can if you like. If you don't want thumb notches, you don't have to do thumb notches. But I did the same for all of them. And uh, yeah, let's just let's just get to decorating and finish up a couple of these tags, and then we'll put them in. I've switched out my tag um, storage to this box. I you know I bought a couple of these boxes last time I went to Michaels. They were on sale for about two to three dollars a piece and um, yeah so my tags were getting to be like lots of chunky little things after last week's uh, envelope tag but this is what all of our tags look like they all have their own little flaps on the edges and that's what's going to hold them all together and if it becomes a problem to the point where these cannot all fit into the, the little rings these little binder rings right here then I will figure out another way to hold them all together to make it into a journal but this is our little chunky monkey right here these are all of the tags that we've done over the last four weeks and yeah we're up to week five so two more weeks after today and we would have completed our challenge so I hope you guys are participating in the weekly challenge um, and tagging me in your projects like let me see what you guys are up to I'd love to see what um, what tags you guys come up with you know this is just something that's really special to me um, a friend or oh, I, I consider her a friend AZ uh, she recommended this um, this project to me so yeah I just want to see what you guys are up to in your weekly tag challenge well I like to start with like a large um, background either a background stamp or some stenciling um, something like that and then fill in the um, areas that I think needs more attention with uh, smaller stamps or sentiments or some sort of words or something like that um, sometimes your background stamp does not it's not legible it's not like you know anything that you can actually read but it does fill in a great portion of the um, the pre ledger paper that you may be using or if you created your own ledger paper from perhaps like uh, this package of I picked this up at Walmart I believe it was so this is like some column it's a column pad basically it has six columns in each and that's how I made these right so this is just 
what the ledger paper looks like prior to being filled out and you can totally do this like you can make up your own um, ledger it will eventually look something similar to this and go from there or you can draw up your own lines and create your own ledger on plain copy weight paper and um, and then stamp it from there and it'll be just just as beautiful so that being said I'm going to use this uh, I don't know what kind of um, what kind of stencil this is it looks like it may be some sort of a tree bark or maybe it looks like some some foreign language in you know handwriting but I'm just going to use my little um, blending brush and some random colors colors that I don't normally use I'm not going to use the um, ground espresso today we're using green and rusty hinge so my green color is um, rustic wilderness right and we're going to use rusty hinge these are both distress oxides from Tim Holtz Ranger collection um, so yeah I'm just going to go in and do some stenciling first which will give me a nice a nice background to start with right and just stencil wherever you think you want it really uh, I try to keep it I try to keep it in one general area if the stencil is large enough to cover up a lot and um, and I'll just blend this along as I go so yeah guys I mean I hope y'all are having a crafty day doing fun things in your crafting space and participating in this in this wacky <laughs> this wacky weekly tag challenge um, project I I'm enjoying it again like I said it was oh that's so pretty it was suggested to me from a Z and um, yeah I just I I think it was a I think it was a um, originally by what's her name uh, me crafty scrapper or scrappy crafter something like that it's Milena's mom I don't I can't remember her name her channel's name but um, scrapbooking with me maybe is the name of the channel but yeah it's just um, one of those projects that uh, AZ suggested that I tackle and she does that a lot she suggests certain projects a lot um, things that she would like to see my take on and you guys can too you can just uh, send me an email like either email me or write a comment down in the description box and just let me know what what would you like to see me make um, on this channel because I'm down for just about anything I'll make anything <laughs> at least try it anyway put my spin on something that you've seen out there just let me know what you would like to see me make and um, yeah I'll give it a whirl so yeah I'm just stenciling all through here just rubbing in some color and trying to stay like on the stencil because as you can see I bled over just a little bit over here so it's starting to look like it's a stencil and I don't want that so yeah I just need to keep my um, stenciling on the stencil itself and not to the edges so I'll just continue this right through here and let's see put some green down here it's not looking too bad just go right over this and uh, oh that looks super cool okay this is a good way to get a lot of color onto your paper without doing too much and it looks like you spent hours and hours on this all right so there's that I'm just going to move on to stamping. Let's stamp some stuff on here. So I'm using some random stamps. Some of it is like background, um, a background stamp. Let me use my clear VersaFine um, ink in the color Onyx, I believe, which is just black. Nocturne is the color. Uh, yeah, so let's just stamp some stuff on here. I believe it goes this way directly on top of what we just inked 
no no reason or anything just anywhere off the page even right so there's that I'm going to do some some of this whatever it is this says first London Observer I'm gonna put it up at the top this can be the title of my ledger cool it's a weekly local journal it says cool cool and um, I'm just gonna stamp some of these first-class fragile express stamps on here and whenever that shifted a little but you can always just apply pressure with any kind of stamping device that you may have yeah that came out okay and I'll do it again somewhere else and that's another good way to um, you know speed your project along just put three stamps on one stamping pad on the um, the acrylic stamping block and um, yeah you can get a lot done in a short space of time nice that came out pretty good all right let's do some more I'm gonna do these two right here together apply a little bit of pressure to transfer that ink yeah my center of this one didn't go so well let's see I'm going to line it up and try it again. Ow! <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I just hit my head on my camera jig. <laughs> I don't know if that moved the camera at all, but yeah, I just bumped my head. Yeah, that came out much better. I'm not really fascinated with that stamp. I don't want to risk it too much um, applying it. And it doesn't um, stamp that well, so... I'm just gonna move on to the next the next stamp. Do not open. Right there. I'll put this one up here. And some of us will cut away. Like we're not gonna use the whole thing. We're gonna tear this all up and use it randomly in our um, collage for our stamp our what do you call it? Our tag. So yeah it'll all get it'll all get dispersed throughout the project and I'm just stamping some random things on here that one's upside down good to know I'll flip I'll flip that over and just stamp it various places after a while you start losing space right like you um, you know you run out of like space for a full stamp like that so it's good to stamp some things off the edges of your paper and um, that'll um, you know change up the dynamic a little bit of where everything goes I think that's pretty good for now like I, I'm not disappointed one bit about this I just want to stamp a couple other things on here's my bag of stamps these are my favorites I have probably Oh, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 stamp packs in here. But these are my favorite ones to use. And that's what I'm looking for right there. So, let's do this. I like, I like, I like, I like these guys. This one and this one. And even this one. Okay, so let's try that. Just going to put them randomly on my acrylic stamping block. And then stamp them. Again, I'm just using VersaFine Clear. If you guys have a, another ink that you prefer, just drop me a comment down below and let me know. Like, if I'm... I, I like this because it does full coverage and I don't have to worry about it too much not transferring but if there is a better ink out there that you guys use just let me know 
this looks great. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. <laughs> I'm thoroughly impressed with the process so far. So yeah, I'm just going to stamp off the page. Off the page. Um, off the page, right? So when you pick it up, it's there, but it's not all there. And it looks great. All right, so I'm going to put this stuff away. And then we can collage our page and then put our tag together two ticks all right guys so all that's left to do is to take our decorated journal ledger paper and apply it to our tag that we've already cut to our five by seven measurement added our little hinge right here the little spine hinge and i'm just going to use scotch create glue stick because it's here I'm going to grab one of my glue mats. This is one that I cut accidentally um, while I was scoring something with my craft knife. So I ended up cutting this. Anyway, so I'm just going to use a Scotch Create and get glue all over here. And um, so you can either cut your paper first and then apply it to the surface that you want to use it on or you can do just a random application this way you're not really sure what you're going to end up with prior to cutting it so i'm just going to take my paper and i'm just going to put it down just about anywhere you can save as much of this as you like or you can use it all up if you want but just make sure all of your tag gets coverage and I'm just gonna pop it down just anywhere just like that all right because I made this paper I can make it again um, I can't hoard it forever <laughs> as I tend to do a lot of other items in my craft room so yeah this is just some ledger paper on the background um, it actually has ledger writing. You can see all the numbers column not columnized into these columns over here. There are items on the ledger. And um, yeah, I just went ahead and uh, stencil and stamped it. That's basically all it is. So now all we're going to do now is just cut away the excess based on the back here. And you can tear it if you want. I'm going for a cleaner look on most of these tags, just um, a little bit more uniformed. So I'm going to cut it really close to the edge. And um, yeah, not too concerned about what's on the front side. I will save all of this though and use it in other projects just like I did this piece right here from a previous tag that we did. So yeah, I'm just going to save the rest of this for another project. Okay, and there, and whoops, and there. Okay, and here is our tag. goes into my scrap pile okay so here's our tag here is our tag pocket so a lot of this is going to get covered up anyway right something else to consider if you like something down here it's going to get covered up with our pocket and i'm just going to apply um let's use what is this art glitter Oh, did I show you how the pocket was made? Okay, so I just added little flaps on here to give the pocket a little bit of a gusset. And I think one of my other tags has a gusset um, design to it. So just follow that. And again, video would go up here <laughs> if I remember. <laughs> Don't hold me to it. So to reduce the bulk, we want to re remove the corners. Just a little triangle out of the corners of each of these pockets. And it also like, it removes the, um, like it removes that, that top portion of the pocket that may stick out. You know, you don't want that sticking out of the top of the pop of the pocket. So I'm again, just using art glitter glue, adding a little, little streams of glue all over this section here on these flaps for my gusset. And yeah, I'm just going to pop this down just as is. 
it's already been pre-collaged or decorated with um, some other journal paper that I decorated and voila there it is that's where it lives forever and ever so basically what I did was just centrally you know equidistant to each side pop down the pocket no real measurements to it if you want a measurement on a 5x7 tag I basically came in about a half inch on either side of the tag okay and here is our top flap that's going to cover it and that's the other thing that's another way you can measure it you can place your top little swing part on top of the tag first and then see how much of it's going to get covered on either side the pocket is going to get covered here is my bucket of brads <laughs> i'm just going to use let's use a gunmetal one on this one and I can use, let's see, I have a green. Let's go with the antique brass one on the other one. Two different sizes. I'm just going to pop a hole right into the top here. Using, let's use our crocodile. And again, I rounded the corners only on the, the swing part of the tag. Okay. Just going to put in let's put a small hole I'm just going to put a 1 8 hole 1 8 of an inch hole right here in the center of there and that's big enough for my brad to go in I'm going to spread those wings on that brad and we're done that's it guys that's pretty much it there's our pocket you can put whatever you like in there a tag a piece of paper a note piece of newspaper <laughs> there we go all right and that's that that's how this one is going to be assembled I do have one more that I need to assemble and I'll do the same thing again it's just homemade paper glued to my tag shape and this is just cardstock that I had on in my stash and again I'm just going to pop a little hole right through here big enough for my brad to go in and then I'll spread those wings on the back of the bread. Okay. And you can put a little um, a little button. Remember these that we made the other day, all these little buttons. If you want reinforcement for your um, for your brad, you can definitely add one of these little circles onto the backs of them. I probably will down the road. As these get to be used more and more you will find that they loosen up a little bit so just pop a little button on the back there or you can even pop one on there to cover up the actual brad just glue it in place let's glue down this pocket and we're done again cut away the excess so you don't have bulk where your gussets overlap forgot to do that on this one and at the top here and here okay so we just removed little triangles off the corners I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue along the sides of my gusseted pocket swing my little tag in front and you can see equidistance from side to side that's where my pockets gonna go so it's gonna go halfway over that and right about right about here I'm using art glitter so very little bit of time that I have in between the time that this pocket touches the paper to the time that it um, it starts to stick in place right all right so Here's another swing tag that we made with a hidden pocket on the inside. Okay, there we go. And our first prototype had a double pocket and this one again, pocket at the bottom and the pocket up here at the top. So you can see that 
um, once you swing your front flap all the way around is how you would be able to access this top pocket right here and of course only um, a certain size object can fit into these pockets so like here is a much shorter tag to this one and that's the one that I would put at the top because that's the one that fits right in there perfectly oh, it's so cute I know it's a little it's probably just a little bit too busy for me but I mean I love it it's just so cute such a cute concept all right guys I'm gonna leave you here these are our three tags for this week's tag a week challenge it's the swing tag with the hidden pocket on the inside all right I'll definitely talk to you guys in the next video have a super crafty day guys thanks for checking out my links down below don't forget to look for those videos up here in the corner hit that bell for notification after you've subscribed as well as the thumbs up button on these videos it really does help my channel to grow helps YouTube to find me just a little bit easier and um, you, I'll bring you guys the best content possible. All right, so I'll talk to y'all in the next video. Stay naturally curious. Bye.